to the 84th commencement of Thomas Jefferson High School for the class of 2015. My name is Willie Dupree and I am the Director of School Counseling. In a few moments, I will be leading our excited young ladies and gentlemen, our children, to one of the most important events in their life. We need your assistance this afternoon. In order for each speaker to be heard, and especially our students to be recognized and celebrated, we ask that you turn off your cell phones or turn down your cell phones and refrain from loud talking and screaming so that all students and participants can be heard. Congratulations to all families and friends of a loved one graduating this afternoon. I'm all in the front. Thank you. Let's have an exciting program.
Jefferson High School. I am Candace Heaney Chaplin, Principal of Thomas Jefferson High School, and it is with great pleasure that I present to you our stage participants. I ask that you hold your applause until each section has been introduced, and that also you remember the dignity of the ceremony and provide for the ability for others to be able to hear. Each stage participant is asked to stand as his or her name is called and to remain standing until the entire section has been introduced. Beginning on my far right in the first row, the Honorable Mamie Taylor, 5th District Representative to our school board. The Honorable Glenn Sturdivant, 1st District Representative to our school board. The Honorable Kimberly Gray, 2nd District Representative to our school board. The Honorable Jeffrey Moore, 3rd District Representative to our school board. The Honorable Kristen Larson, 4th District Representative to our school board and Vice Chair of our school board. The Honorable Donald Coleman, 7th District Representative to our school board and Chair of our school board. And Dr. Dana Bedden, Superintendent of Richmond Public Schools. Please recognize the section. On my far right in the second row are Ms. Candace Hunter, Chief of Staff. Mr. Dandridge Phillips, Executive Director of Human Resources. Dr. Michelle Boyd, Executive Director of Exceptional Education and Student Services. Dr. Anthony Leonard, Executive Director of Elementary Schools. Mr. A. Jeffers, Executive Director of Secondary Schools. Mr. Thomas Kranz, Assistant Superintendent of Operations. Ms. Andrea Kane, Associate Superintendent of Academic Services. On my far left, on the first row, are Ms. Jada Melton, Class President, 2015. Ms. Tierra Mays, SCA President, Class of 2015. Ms. Hania Fountain, Valedictorian. Ms. Saida Hayner, also valedictorian. <laughs> Willie Dupree, department head guidance. <laughs> Mr. Darren A. Thompson, assistant principal. <laughs> Mr. W. Marshall Andrews, junior assistant principal. <laughs> Dr. Irvin Johnson, founder and director of the Dream Makers Academy. Williams, Department Head of Career and Technical Education. Major Latasha West, Commanding Officer of the Air Force JROTC Program. Mrs. Mary Person, Department Head of Physical Education and Performing Arts. Ms. Melissa Johnson, Department Head of World Languages and Visual Arts, IB Coordinator, Diploma Program. Coordinator IB Middle Years Program. Ms. Alicia, Alicia, Alicia Johnson Coy, Department of Health and Sexual Mrs. Victoria Garrett, Department of Health. Mrs. Janet Hawks Pleasant, Department of Health and Mathematics. Danica Milner, Department Head of Science. Yeah. Mr. Matthew Zipper, Department Head of Social Studies. Yeah. You may be seated. In the audience and flanking our candidates for graduation are members of the faculty and staff of Thomas Jefferson High School. At this time, I ask the teachers and staff members stand and be recognized. Jefferson, patrons, parents of former students, and community partners. Please know. 
know that we welcome your presence and value the support that you bring to this event this afternoon. Thank you, and the program will proceed as printed. Dr. Irvin Johnson is the founder and director of both the Dream Makers Academy and the Do Something Movement of Central Virginia. Both organizations serve the community at large. The Dream Makers Academy serves the community with resources, childcare, and education resources to further advance the position of people in adversity and distress. The Do Something Movement serves the direct needs of the community. They organize and conduct community walks, cleanups, and education opportunity events. By day, Dr. Johnson works at Centurion College with community outreach development and a teacher of theology by night. Within those hours, Dr. Johnson runs and operates his business, The Main Source, which is a marketing and training development company. A part of Dr. Johnson's mission is to motivate the students within inner city schools and to develop the cohesion and workability of at-risk communities and youth to show them that demographics can't determine your destiny and that your past cannot stop you. Great strides have been made as Dr. Johnson continues to work with the Richmond City Police Department and the Attorney General's Office to bring these things into fruition. Within the school systems, Dr. Johnson is often summoned to speak to students and help develop their interests. Dr. Johnson attended Virginia Commonwealth University, Virginia Triumphant College and Seminary, where he obtained his Doctorate of Divinity. He now is a PhD student at Liberty University. He is currently the overseer at Amplified Grace International, president of the Richmond chapter of the National Reentry and Restoration Project, and a proud AmeriCorps member for the City of Richmond Office of Human Services. Applause for Dr.
any ordinary address would consist of fancy cliches and idioms like, look ahead, the best is yet to come. This is only the beginning and reach for your dreams. The speaker would talk about their experiences and how they got along after sitting in the very seat in which you sit right now. They would spend four minutes addressing the students, the faculty, all the dignitaries in the room along with Mommy Pookie Nene. <laughs> yes, I will get to that, but not before I give honor to where honor is due. And that honor is you and you alone. The Thomas Jefferson High School class of 2015. <laughs> September 2nd, 2014, you have spent 36 weeks in an institution of standard. That equates to 1,080 days, not including snow days, 25,920 hours, 1,055,200 minutes, and 93,312,000. Whatever denomination you choose to measure, it happened. Even when you didn't want it to, it happened. Even when friends dropped out, it happened. Even when you wanted to, too, it happened. And the time never stopped. And now you can say, I made it. I survived, and I felt like I had no purpose. I waited, I lifted a standard. I beat a demographical research re result. I looked the statistics in the eye and told them, you cannot determine my destiny. Accredited, unaccredited, underrated, outdated, it doesn't matter because you made it. At times you struggled with the reason that felt like treason to your soul, but because you couldn't understand why your mind was saturated with thoughts of why education while your body was overtaken with automation and proverbial cruise control. Day by day, the same faces, the same food, the same clock on that wall, and in some cases, education became education. The mere fact that you as a class, as a unit, as a direct representation of the great high school in which you attended, can be graduated against all odds, it's something to celebrate within itself. You know what they say, city schools aren't as successful as their counterparts. That's what they say, who is they? And whomever they are, I can guarantee you that they're not the author of success. The originator of success is right here in this room, the class of 2015. If I may thanks you for only but one more moment with the idea that there is a science to success, but more importantly, that there is a scientific method that exists in the realm of success. We are taught that the first step of the scientific method is to ask a question. My question to you, class of 2015, is will you make a difference in your community, your environment, or your world? We go on to find out that the second step is to do background research. Your research has been qualitative and experimental in the system of public education for the past 12 years of your life to constantly evaluate, innovate, and reset your mind. The third step of the scientific methodology is to construct a hypothesis or conjecture. It is the success model that you construct and assemble a team of like-minded individuals who will push you when you fall and remind you that you're great of your greatness when you are discouraged. In the standard model, you're to test the model however, whichever way it comes. You know, the haters, oh yes, they will go. You know there's a saying, if you ain't got a hater, you're doing something wrong. Finally, there is a conclusion. Conclude that you are successful, not by looking where you are, but knowing where you are going and truly embracing the idea that success is not a destination, but it is a journey. And finally, wearing that gown, cap, and tassel, you have a responsibility to reach back and grab the ones who dropped out so that they can feel the freedom and joy that you feel. A feeling of completion, yet a knowledge that you're on to another level in life. Show them that it is worth going on when you don't see the purpose, but an acknowledgement that it's all worth it. 
Show them that in this place a stage isn't set. No, not one with a director, actors, writers, or certainly one without a script. Just them in a soliloquy. And once that scene is over, then it's time for the next act. Oh, and if they come up with an excuse, just remember that excuses are tools of incompetence used to build mountains of nothingness. And those who use them seldom accomplish anything. If I may leave you with anything, I'll say the principal, the assistant principals, faculty, staff, family, and graduates. In the famous words of a young man by the name of Aubrey Graham, better known as Drake, you started from the bottom, now you did. Thank you, Dr. Johnson, for your inspiring and thoughtful message to our graduates and our guests. At this time, I would like to share with you a few of our many accomplishments that have made Thomas Jefferson High School an institution of high academic achievement. This year, the class of 2015 has truly distinguished itself academically. 44% of our graduates will receive an advanced studies diploma, with the remainder receiving a standard, modified standard, or special diploma. Over 70 seniors were enrolled in our advanced placement courses, and they are eagerly anticipating their test results, which may afford them college credit. 17 seniors were enrolled in, a dual, enroll, in dual enrollment classes, a plan that allows high school students to meet the requirements for high school graduation while simultaneously earning college credit. Dual enrollment students took their courses at J. Sargent Reynolds Community College and Virginia Union University. 45 IB seniors have engaged in a rigorous in a rigorous program of studies and competed against worldwide academic standards. We are proud of their hard work and accomplishments and their courage for participating in such an endeavor. One of our seniors is a part of the third year graduates of the Governor's Career and Technical Education Academy for STEM in Richmond, that science, technology, engineering, and math. This program provided a rigorous academic and technical program of study in two career pathways. Engineering and technology and therapeutic services programs were taught at the Richmond Technical Center. Students have been prepared for a full range of post-secondary opportunities. These opportunities consist of two and four year colleges entry-level employment, apprenticeships, and the military. Because of the focus and academic determination of the class of 2015, 85% of this year's graduates will continue their education in four-year colleges or universities. <laughs> and two-year community colleges, both in the Commonwealth and in other states. 3% will enter trade and technical schools, Another 12% of our students are well prepared to enter the military and the world of work. The following students will enter the military. Jaquil Hawker. Aisha Jones. Taylor Nickens. Taekwon Penelope. Deshaun Patterson and Kylie Ross. We will all go on to the armed services to defend our country. Simone Smith will serve in the military reserves. More than 45 colleges and universities extended invitations to our students this year. Scholarships and grants for the class of 2015 totaled over $3.4 million. We are so proud that our students have been welcomed at an array of diverse and impressive schools. 
two of the academic standouts of our graduating class are our COVID valedictorians, Ms. Anita Fountain and Ms. Sergeyna Hayden. These young people have distinguished themselves as stellar scholars. Anita, please stand as I review your record at Thomas Jefferson. Nia has distinguished herself as a stellar scholar, serving as co-valedictorian of the graduating class of 2015. She has strived to produce and uphold a 4.8 grade <laughs> Throughout her high school career, she has obtained leadership roles such as captain of the Viking cheerleaders, Vice President of the Student Council Association, Treasurer of the Class of 2015 for a year, as well as the Treasurer of the Spanish Honor Society. She has participated in many activities at some point throughout high school in which she thrives. Beta Club, Future Business Leaders of America, Lady Viking Tennis Team, and IB Ambassadors are a few clubs that she has participated in. Outside of school, she participates in many volunteer programs and partakes in community service activities as often as she can. She participated in a youth philanthropy project with Hands for a Greater Ritual, Feed More with the Virginia Food Bank, the Children's Museum Hands on Day, the Science Museum, and the Virginia Home for Boys and Girls. Anil volunteered at her church as a dance coordinator and a worker of the media ministry. She is also a proud employee of Cookout. Normally, to 15 hours a week. Like that, Anita. In the fall, Anita will be attending the University of Virginia. She will make it in biology pre med in Spanish. Please acknowledge Anita Fountain's accomplishment. Fisher Elementary, Lucille Brown, and finally Thomas Jefferson High School. Saida has participated in the National Honor Society, Science and Spanish Honor Society, and the Beta Club. She has also participated in varsity volleyball and served as an IB ambassador and class of representative member. Saida has also volunteered with the Asian and Pakistani Society of Central Virginia as well as the Boss Course Hospital. Saida, Saida's parents, who immigrated from India have always reinforced academics and given back to your fellow man. So today, Saida stands for front of you as she accepts the mission to become a cavalier at the University of Virginia. <laughs> where she majored in biochemistry on a pre-med track. Her hopes and dreams are to become a doctor and be in a position to give back to her community here in the United States as well as globally. She finds value in volunteering and looks to fit in wherever she can as a humanitarian. Please acknowledge Saida Hader as the At this time, I will recognize the top 10 students of the Thomas Jefferson class of 2015. As I call your name, please stand and remain standing and be acknowledged. Audience, please hold your applause until all the names have been called. Neil Fountain, University of Virginia. Saida Hayden, University of Virginia. Olivia Leon, the College of William and Mary. Gloria Stott. The University of Virginia. 
Aaron Green. Christopher Newport University. Rihanna Eadie. Seniors, you have been recognized this evening for your perseverance, focus, academic achievements, and honors. I am privileged to recognize as well the other distinguished group of individuals critical to your success. Your parents, grandparents, step-parents, guardians, aunts, uncles, sisters, brothers, and other family members and friends. Their patience and support have been invaluable in ensuring your presence at graduation this afternoon. Family members, we salute you too. For the achievement of your children belongs in part to you. On behalf of the class of 2015, I would like to thank Mrs. Cap Ms. Callahan, Mrs. Victoria Garrett, senior class sponsors, Ms. Danica Milner and Mrs. Patricia Weir, senior class coordinators, for their endless efforts, patience, and guidance on behalf of our graduation candidates. Thanks to senior class principal, Mr. Marshall Andrews, for his assistance to our graduates. Finally, we would like to thank our leader and principal, Mrs. Candace Vini Chapel. In addition, our caring senior class school counselors, Mrs. Josephine Butler, Ms. Catherine Haynes, Dr. Deborah Turner, and Mr. Will Dupree. They have provided vision, enthusiasm, and vitality. Last but not least, tremendous thanks goes to our wonderful teachers and staff members who help seniors achieve this goal. Mrs. Chapman, Mr. Andrews, Mrs. Garrett, Ms. Callahan, Mrs. Milner, Mrs. Weir, Mrs. Butler, Mr. Dupree, Dr. Turner, Ms. Haynes, teachers and staff members. Please stand and allow our seniors to applaud you. Thank you. You may be seated.
dedication to success. Of course, the success did not come without obstacles to overcome. And for me personally, there have been many, but guess what? I made it. We all made it. One of the things that I struggled with, but eventually learned how to manage, was balancing. With that being said, this year was extremely hard for me because I had so much to balance. I had to balance my schoolwork, my social life, my personal life, extracurriculars, as well as my part-time job. I was, from the beginning, overwhelmed and unsure of how to balance the, all these aspects of my life. Senioritis, as we all know is real, yeah. played a major role in how things turned out for me, especially in my first semester, since that's when I experienced most of my academic challenges. Initially, I was assigned too many hours at work, so I couldn't get my homework done. I had cheerleading practice twice a week, along with games, every Friday. I attended church services twice a week. So as a result, I became sleep deprived, and there was very little time for a social life. There are many late nights and early mornings. Homecoming was definitely a tough time for me because I was a part of the planning committee while simultaneously running for homecoming queen. I put these things before my schoolwork, and, I resolved, and as a result, my grades suffered. That's when I decided on how much time I would give to all these areas of my life. So I formed a routine that worked best for me, and eventually I achieved perfect balance. Through this year, I've learned that life is a balancing act. Even after high school, when we go to on to college or straight into the real world, we need to know how to prioritize everything that we will have in our place in balance. That part of life never ends. Thomas Jefferson High School has gracefully, gracefully given us a start to experiencing this balance. Just as we balance participating in sports, clubs, and other extracurricular activities with our schoolwork, we will have to balance our families, careers, and social life in the real world. Balance is an important key to life because it ultimately leads to happiness and success. Therefore, it is important that we carry this factor through our life no matter what we decide to do. A famous social reformer, Frederick Douglass, once said, without struggle, there is no progress. Without being, with that being said, there will be times when life will try to get you off track, and as a result, you may become unbalanced. However, while you are getting back on track, learn to rejoice in your obstacles, because through struggles, perseverance is awarded. Furthermore, a part of being balanced is to take a break in order to reflect. One of the things I enjoy studying is numerology. When considering the year 2015, the number 15 happens to signify rest. Through all the hardships and difficulties we've experienced over the years while working to accomplish our goal, we can finally rest. And that goes for parents, teachers, and students. Yeah. Thank you, class of 2015, for giving me the most memorable years of my life, and I'm excited to see what's in store for us. As I close, As I close, I want to remind you. That as you venture off into your next step in life, be sure to be balanced so that you can accomplish your goals. Again, thank you, Thomas Jefferson class of 2015, for the great memories, the friendships made, and the lessons learned. I'm excited to see what the future holds for you. May God bless us all in our future endeavors. Congratulations, class of 2015, we did it. Every single person in a gown today represents a family and a support system 
that helped us reach this point of success. Oftentimes, we forget about what others have done for us, but we have to remind ourselves that they are the ones that made us strong. All the teacher, teachers, mentors, and friends we had from kindergarten up until now are the ones that have disguised themselves and have become invisible in our memories, but they are the ones who shaped us into who we are today, and we must take a moment to identify them. We must recognize our foundations built by our families, teachers, and friends, and accredit them for helping us get to this point. I am so emotionally grateful towards my support system that I would like to start off by acknowledging the impact my family has had on me. I come from a South Asian background with immigrant parents. My parents left their home country to make the United States, which has been unaccepting of them, their home, simply to ensure my brothers and I have a comfortable lifestyle with quality education. My parents left their comfort and to become parents to travel abroad to a place so strong to them out of selflessness. Can you imagine packing your belongings, leaving all your loved ones, and moving to an uninviting country across the world? Well, my parents did, and so I want to shine light on their struggles because they deserve recognition for working so hard. Many of the societal issues South Asians have to suffer through are suppressed when we generally talk and think of civil rights. It is important to consider the implications of being foreign in this country and how hard it can be. So when I stand today, the face of a Pakistani and Indian daughter, it is essential you all understand the depth of my parents had to go through to make sure I overcame all the societal obstacles that were thrown my way. I am in a lifetime of debt to my mother and my father for giving me a life that many people in the world can only dream of. It is because of their hardships and their dedication to raising me that I am standing on this stage today. All my accomplishments are a showcase of their hard work. When you think of my achievements, it is only appropriate you applaud my parents because they are the foundation of my success. So please, give a round of applause to them for doing what is impossible for most parents to do. I would also like everyone in this vicinity to understand the privilege of being born and raised in the United States. Many people, like my parents, are willing to give up their comfort to grant their children the privilege of being raised in this country. And why? Because the United States is the land of opportunity. There are nothing but opportunities for people of all races, genders, and socioeconomic classes. That being said, I acknowledge that there are still a numerous amount of obstacles for minorities, but we all have a chance of getting where we want to be. It is just a matter of how hard we are willing to work to get on the path we deem appropriate for our happiness. And once we do, then we can shape an easier path for our children and their children to reach heights we could not. We can be the face of success for millions of people around the world if we are willing to be. I would also like to bring to attention all my peers who worked harder than me. Unfortunately, not everybody has had the security or support I have had throughout my life. I commend all my fellow peers who struggled twice as hard as me to maintain their school lives, their jobs, community service, and their health. I have been privileged to have had the support I did. It feel as if I do not even truly deserve this title of being valedictorian, because I believe many people have worked just as hard as me, if not more. And so I applaud those who have faced obstacles that I cannot relate to. Many of the people I befriended throughout my journey in high school also come from minority backgrounds. Each and every one of us have faced hurdles along the way due to our backgrounds. But together, we brought out the best that we had to offer, and our diversity strengthened our intellectual state of minds, our health, and our sense of purpose. We supported each other and influenced each other to progress and stay on the path to success. Our mentors and family members drove us to work hard and they gave us the monetary and emotional support that kept us on the path to success. We owe it to them to keep working hard 
in pushing towards our dreams. Many of you will go off to do amazing things with your lives, but I want all of you to remember your roots. It is important that we do not become obsessed with our self-achievements and stay grounded to our foundation. I hope that all of you will in some way give back to your communities and help those that are not as privileged overcome their hurdles. I think we have the power to change the world because of how dedicated and influential we are. I hope to see all of you utilize your power to ensure a better world for the coming generations. Whatever field of study or work you decide to pursue, make sure you do it in the name of those who have supported you thus far. Never give up on your dreams. If there is anything I have learned by working alongside all of you, is that you are exceedingly bright individuals and can change the world one step at a time. I congratulate Thomas Jefferson High School's class of 2015 on all your achievements, and I sent you off to do bigger and better things as adults. Thank you.
Francis Anderson. Leave out 
Jessica Moore. Ian Moore. Samantha Moore.